As usual, we had a great Bible study yesterday for midweek Bible study at the river. And uh, this is just a brief recap. In case you missed it, we want you to be blessed. And we talked about unusual lying, unusual calling. Now, not lying as in not telling the truth, but lying down. The Bible says in 1 Samuel chapter 3 that Samuel was a boy. He was in the temple. Uh, Eli was a priest. It mentions that Eli's sons in other chapters that they were not living right. And we looked at the boy Samuel and how God called him and how he always ran to Eli until Eli taught him to respond to God. Listen, number one, God has a calling on your life. And so you need to know that every day that you get up and that you every day that you rise and every day that you lay your head down, know that you can rise and lay your head down with God having a calling on your life. That means your life is purpose, purposeful and that you matter to God. There is not one day that you rise and go down. So the Bible says from the rising of the sun to the going down, I will praise the Lord. And that's the way you want to live with God in your rising and in your going to bed. Number one, I want to ask you today about starting with the boy Samuel is everything was going out. The Bible mentions in first Samuel chapter three that the light in the temple was going out. The Bible mentions that Sam, Eli's vision, he was losing his vision. It was going out in a manner of speaking. And the Bible says, unfortunately, that Eli's sons were sleeping with the women who came to the temple. And I played on that and they were going out with the women. Let me ask you something. Don't go out. Stay in. Stay in Jesus. Stay in Christ. Stay in the word. And that's what we learn about Samuel. Because the Bible said that while Eli laid down somewhere else, the Bible mentions in 1 Samuel chapter 3, which we're studying, that Samuel laid down near the ark of God. Samuel slept in a strategic place. Don't just rest your head anywhere. Be strategic. Don't just trust anybody. It's a matter of laying your head down. Let me ask you, where do you sleep? Where do you find rest? Do you seek to be near God even in your sleep? If you're having trouble sleeping, I know it seems too practical. Ask God to be the Lord of your sleep. Matthew 8, 20 says this, or Matthew chapter, yeah, Matthew 8, 20 says, Foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay down his head. You know what? Jesus is looking for a place that can handle the weight of his headship. Can you handle the weight of his headship? I'm not saying that you support Jesus, but I'm saying, can you handle Jesus being the head of your life, the head of your marriage, the head of your money, the head of your, your person, the head of everything? Jesus is allowed to speak into it. And if you have a problem with God and how he tells you to manage your money, mm, he can't lay his head on that. Does your life provide a place for the headship of Jesus to rest and lead later on we see in john 19 30 we see the head and the neck of jesus it said when he had received the drink jesus said it is finished with that he bowed his head and he gave up his spirit it didn't say he hung his head like he lost control he bowed that means that he willingly submitted and he he finally found rest in the arms of the father well actually he had a mission to go lead people free and and still come back but he was you will never find rest outside of God. Number 2 Samuel had receptivity. Listen the Bible said that God called him though he called him 3 times he had receptivity. But where did Samuel run when God called? He ran to his usual place of instruction which was from Eli the priest. Where do you run to your usual place? Remember the message is unusual lying, unusual calling. A lot of times we run to the usual place instead of running to God. For money, is it your job? For relationship, is it your husband, wife, kids, and family? For peace, is it the spa, vacation? For provision, is it H-E-B, sprouts, the farmer's market, gardening? For love, is it your girlfriend, your boyfriend? For stress levels, is it the nail salon? Or I decompress with video games? Or I like to watch VBS and Chinese movies. Uh, for preparation, do you run to like, man, I wish I had more life preparation. I need another degree. I need another credential. I need more training, more in-service, more professional development. Everything you need to Run to Jesus first. See, he's the source. Everything else is a resource. We never put the resource before the source. Amen. Jesus needs to be your go-to. And then we said Samuel had a quick response time. Every time he heard God call him, he responded really quick. Let me just leave it like this. Slow obedience is disobedience. How long does it take for you or me to respond to what God has told you? How long? And I want you to practice being obedient to God Quickly, three times he called him.
The Bible says not only in the calls, while Eli knew the words of God, Samuel was also learning with the words, the tone of God, how God speaks. Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice, not my words, my voice, my tone. Exodus 34, 27 says, and the Lord said unto Moses, write thou these words after the tenor or tone. You know, you have sopranos, altos. After the tenor of these words, I have made a covenant with thee and with Israel. Listen, I pray that you will learn to hear not just the words of God, but the tone of God. So I pray today, Father, in the name of Jesus, if someone is not resting in you, that they will come to your feet and rest in Jesus right now. But I pray that they will have a, we will have a quick response time to your word, that we will have a place where we're always receptive for your word says, blessed are those who are not offended because of me. We're receptive. We can receive the word because you can be in a restaurant and if you refuse to eat, you can starve to death because you're not receptive to what's in front of you. So we pray that we would be receptive. We pray that we would have quick response time and we pray that we would hear your tone. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, listen, on behalf of Pastor Anthony, everyone here at the River Worship Center, we will see you for Bible study for midweek and on Sundays. If you don't have a church, come to the river. We are your church. We're located at 317 King Avenue. We got room for more and more and more. And if we have to start another service, we got room for more because there's always room for more in Jesus. God bless you.